right. First up. Okay. It's space time. No, it's um, <laughs> it, it's a grid of space time that oh, that's bends right. with gravity. Yes, you no. can bend this grid. Um, get it space time because we also have a space related I thing. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Know. Anyways, okay. um, so it's a grid of paper. Okay, so this is actually a sample that I got for an Ada box like a couple of years ago, and um, I got a pack of ten of these because I was thinking, oh, maybe put it into the Ada box. We ended up giving away a gridded line notebook. But I actually really, really liked these gridded uh, sticky notes. And uh, they're pretty expensive. They're like a buck for 80 sheets. And they're exactly what you think they are. They are gridded sticky notes. So right. here so you go. Want. Hold on, let me zoom out a little bit. So um, you get uh, 80 sheets of uh, sticky notes, each one. Each one has a grid, which I think is really handy if you're like drawing circuitry and you're like, well, I really want to make very beautiful op amp diagrams and stuff. And like you want like your transistors to look great, whatever. Uh, you can also do it for like kanji or hanji or uh, if you're doing pixel art or whatever. And of course it's uh, sticky. So you put yeah. it on and you stick it off. It doesn't leave any residue. Um, they're fun. They're You're an engineer. You need these. I really like. This is okay. actually one of those things that I was just like, I kind of need to have these in store because I, I couldn't find them anywhere else. Next up. Uh, all right. Next up, we have these little silicone inserts. Uh, you know, it's kind of a little dusty because there's construction happening next door. I don't know if you saw the Disney construction. So um, these are little like silicone nubules that are designed to fit RJ45 Ethernet or, you know, some phone systems use RJ45. Um, they plug in, but they're easy to remove. They're nice silicone, squishy, um, very handy. Come in a pack of 10. So if you have a whole hub of six or eight ports, you've got plenty. Next up. Next up, we have an assembled version of the Music Maker Featherwing. This features the VS1053. It's uh, Ogvorbis AC, MP3, of course, like VMA MIDI player. Um, we have these feather wings, uh, you know, for sale that are unassembled. But we had some leftover we found. These were actually in an Ada box a while ago, and we're like, oh, we have a couple dozen of these. Let's put them in the shop for people who don't want to um, assemble them. They want to just plug and play them onto your feather. Works just like the other feather wing, and they have an amplifier built into, I think, a stereo 2 watt amp uh, left and right, so you can use four or eight ohm speakers and get your music playing super fast. Thanks up. Next up, we have a revision for the uh, 1.54 inch e ink display. Uh, I believe this is now using the SSD 1681 chipset, or it's 1680, uh, and it used to be something else. Uh, the e ink chipsets have been changing around. We have drivers for all the different chipsets. These are the same look and size as before, but if you uh, have programmed these with firmware, you'll need to update the firmware on your microcontroller or driver uh, for SSD 1681. Uh, it's a very good chipset. Other than that, it's just that uh, the previous version of the chip driver was discontinued, and this is the new version. So that's that's an updated product. Keycaps, 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 keycaps. Okay, so now we're getting into. The, Let me just click through each set. The majority. Right here. Well, I mean, these are some clear ones and some black ones. But basically, yeah. we have a large number of DSA or XDA. I don't know if you saw Colin's video we had earlier. I did. Explaining about profiles of keycaps. So these are symmetric. Low profile DSA, sometimes called XDA chip, uh, uh, keycap sets. And let's go to the overhead and I'll That's show. That's the best way to show them. Okay, so yeah, I grabbed, I really quickly grabbed like my. Candy. Yeah, they're very, they're very colorful. Okay, so this is not all of them because we also actually have uh, the black and no. the smoke and the gray and the white and then the translucent, hold on, the translucent red and blue. But uh, these are many of the colors. So we've got clear, red, orange, dark yellow, neon green, mint green, light blue, blue, dark purple, light purple, pink, no, lavender and pink. Uh, so these are the colorful. And these are opaque. This one, as you can tell, is, of course, translucent, which means if you have a, a backlit um, LED, you'll see through it. We also have other translucent keys, which you can see quite nicely here how they are translucent. Uh, this is a smoke translucent, blue translucent, red translucent, gray, not translucent, opaque, white opaque, and black opaque. So uh, many colors. They come in a pack of 10, so you can pick and choose. Of course, they don't have any markings on top of them, and they're completely symmetric. So like the the you know, they fit any Cherry MX key and they're symmetric no matter which way you put them. They don't have a tilt to them, which makes them, I think, personally, really great for macro pads 
um, because you don't, you want to have them all be kind of flat uh, to have a good look for the ortholinear uh, design you got here going on here. Uh, so those are the different color pack of keycaps. We have so many that we're just going to show them yeah. all at once here. But they're all really wonderful colors. All right, next up, coming soon. This will be in the sh store shortly. This is the Circuit Python Space Explorer sticker. Holographic. Um, we, it's hologram like. It's holographic like. It's um, holographic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a beautiful sticker, and uh, we're doing a lot of space themed stuff. So if you want to get this, it, uh, we're going to make a round, and that's going to be it. These are Circuit Python Space Explorer, and Circuit Python is actually in space. It's used on um, those little small sets. Micro mini sets. Yes. All right. And now tonight, the star of the show, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, and our Adafruit team is... That's right. It's time for the RP2040 QT Trinky. Thank you, uh, Bongo Cat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, a new Trinky, and this is this Trinky has a lot of different purposes. Uh, so first off, it plugs into your USB-A port. Of course, it's extra thick, so it fits snugly inside. And it has inside of it an RP2040. Ooh, look at the beautiful yes. photography with the Raspberry Pi logo. It's got eight megabytes of flash on the left there. It's got a reset and boot button, uh, so you can reset it. And the boot button is also a user button, so you have like one input button if you need. There's a little NeoPixel uh, for status, or you know, you want to blink an uh, RGB LED. And then on uh, the right, yeah, the buttons um, are on the side. And the reason for that is because the shape of it is one inch, the body is one inch by 0.7 inches, which is the same as like the majority of our STEM QT sensors, which means that you can, if you have some M2.5 machine screws, nylon screws recommended, um, so you don't short anything out, you can attach it on top, you can still get to the buttons, even though something's attached on top, so you can make kind of a, a customized USB to I squared C connector. And um, so here, for example, What's interesting about this is that you could have CircuitPython running on this board, which I think in this case is what's going on here. You program it over I squared, you program it over USB with CircuitPython running on the RP2040 and then say connect it to this I squared C OLED. Or what you can do is you can drag and drop this special firmware called U2IF, which I know sounds a lot like UF2 or U2F, but it's not. It's this intermediary format that does USB to I squared C and then you could use C Python on your computer to send data to the RP2040, uh, sort of like a little bridge USB to I squared C device. So you can use it to program any of your um, STEM QT uh, enabled devices, OLEDs or displays or sensors or fan controllers or what have you. Um, and the RP2040 is powerful enough, has enough RAM and there's enough storage on board that you can basically have every single um, Raspberry Pi driver on there and it's definitely fast enough to, to drive and have enough memory to drive any of our sensors and devices. So, you know, we went with the RP2040 because it's inexpensive um, but powerful and it's a great USB trinky friend for connected to any I2C device. So, I think I, I could show it on the overhead but honestly the, the images I mean, we have... I was going to say, I think this is it. The images are quite, yeah. quite large and good. So, yeah. All right. RP2040 QT Trinky. Lots of fun. I think we even put some in the shop already. That's all of our new products for this week. We did it. Yay. Oh,